Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Simona Sacco. I am a professor of uh, neurology at uh, the University of L'Aquila in Italy, and uh, I am uh, the co-chair of uh, the guideline board of uh, the European Stroke Organization. It's uh, my pleasure to be here to discuss uh, some hot topics from uh, the European Stroke Organization guideline on uh, intravenous thrombolysis for uh, acute uh, ischemic stroke. And uh, I welcome uh, two, the two leading authors of uh, this guideline, Guillaume Turc from uh, the Hospital Saint Anne in Paris, France, and uh, William Whiteley from uh, the University of Edinburgh in uh, UK. Hello. Uh, William. Uh, hello. hello. Thank you. William, uh, uh, what is uh, the evidence and uh, the general recommendation to use uh, intravenous thrombolysis in patients with uh, ischemic stroke? Well, I think you know, most of us will be uh, familiar with the evidence that alteplase uh, is of overall benefit to patients uh, with acute ischemic stroke when given within four and a half hours of the onset of their symptoms. And we very strongly recommended uh, the use of this treatment in this group of patients, uh, whatever their age and whatever their stroke severity. And that's supported by a number of indivi uh, individual randomized trials, as well as a, a study level meta-analysis from the Cochrane organization and an individual participant data meta-analysis uh, from the stroke thrombolysis trialists collaboration. So we're clear that uh, giving intravenous thrombolysis within the first four and a half hours, or at least within the first three hours, probably increases the odds of a good outcome by 75%, uh, although will increase the risk of intracranial hemorrhage. On balance, it's of overall benefit uh, when given to patients of whatever age uh, and pretty much any stroke severity. Thank you. And uh, Guillaume, uh, we all uh, see many patients who, who arrive uh, after the conventional time window uh, or uh, who wake up with the signs uh, of stroke. Can we treat uh, those patients as well with the intravenous thrombolysis? What uh, does uh, the guideline say for uh, this issue? Uh, so we deliberately decided to provide separate recommendations for patients with unknown uh, stroke onset and for patients with known stroke duration of more than 4.5 hours. Indeed, we believe that they correspond to two distinct clinical scenarios because the true onset of stroke in patients awakening from sleep is frequently less than 4.5 hours. Under both scenarios, intravenous thrombolysis should only be given to selected patients and therefore advanced imaging is needed. So. Let's first consider patients with unknown stroke onset. Based on the results of the EOS individual participant data meta-analysis, we recommend intravenous thrombolysis in patients who have either DWI flare mismatch or core perfusion mismatch. Core perfusion mismatch was assessed on CT or MRI and defined according to the criteria of the EXTEND trial. For patients with known stroke duration of 4.5 to 9 hours, our recommendations are based on the results of another individual participant data meta-analysis of three randomized control trials. We recommend IVT in patients with core perfusion mismatch, either assessed with CT or MRI. It's very important to note that thrombectomy was not performed in all of these trials and therefore, our evidence-based recommendation apply to patients for whom thrombectomy is not indicated or not planned. To guide clinical practice despite, despite scarce evidence in this situation, we also provided expert consensus statements suggesting to perform both IVT and thrombectomy in patients with large vessel occlusion who meet uh, these new eligibility criteria for IVT. Thank you, Guillaume. Uh, really helpful uh, to move uh, forward uh, with uh, our clinical practice. Um, 
And uh, another uh, question for uh, William, uh, um, a special population is uh, represented by patients who have uh, aged more than uh, 80 years. Uh, we see them very commonly in uh, our clinical practice, uh, but they were uh, excluded from uh, early trials. And uh, what's the current evidence and uh, what is uh, the message uh, of the guideline referring to this patient subgroup? So, of course, older patients are important to all our practices as stroke physicians, uh, as the strongest risk factor for stroke is uh, being older uh, and as our populations age. So this is a really important group to consider. When we're thinking about treating patients under four and a half hours, um, we felt there was no reason uh, to avoid treatment in patients over the age of 80, we encourage their treatment and they should be treated in the same way as patients who are under the age of 80 years. And there is very strong evidence to support that um, from the IST3 trial uh, and from individual participant data meta-analysis. So where a patient is otherwise eligible for thrombolysis, they are older, they're over 80, we suggest they should be treated in the same way as every other patient. There's, of course, evidence, there's less evidence about older patients in other special clinical scenarios. So, for example, in wake-up stroke or uh, patients presenting four and a half to nine hours after symptom onset or other particular uh, situations. Um, but it was our judgment as a panel uh, that we, in those situations, we treat older people in the same way as younger people. So we ignore age uh, when we're thinking about treating um, patients when all other things are equal. I suppose the third and important thing uh, to think about uh, aging is of course, older people are more likely uh, to be frail or disabled in a number of ways uh, compared to younger people. And frailty itself has not been directly studied. It's been indirectly studied based on uh, brain, Im brain imaging markers of frailty. Um, Frailty comes with its own um, ethical, uh, problem, uh, ethical uh, uh, considerations. Um, but for our purposes, uh, we felt that where a patient uh, would benefit from thrombolysis, could potentially benefit from thrombolysis, and they or their family members uh, would like them to have thrombolysis, we saw there was no reason for them not to go ahead with intravenous alphaplase. And, and, and maybe they would benefit more than other patients because of their, these patients have such a high risk of post-stroke disability. So three things, less than four and a half hours, treat an older patient in the same way as a younger patient. We've got very strong evidence to support that. In special situations, perhaps we have less evidence, but we couldn't see any reason to treat older people differently from younger people. And thirdly, where older people are frail, they probably do stand to benefit as much as non-frail people. It hasn't been directly studied, um, but of course we'd, we'd encourage uh, physicians to be sensible in the use of our place in, in, in these people. Thank you, Simone. Well, excellent, a very important and uh, clear messages. Um, uh, Guillaume, uh, we know that uh, thrombolytic uh, agents are not uh, limited to alteplase, uh, and uh, I know that uh, there's a part of uh, the guideline uh, dealing with uh, teneteplase. Uh, can you briefly explain the potential advantage uh, of uh, this uh, new drug uh, and uh, uh, explain the recommendations uh, you provided in this regard? Yes, thank you, Simona. So tenecteplase has a higher affinity for fibrin and for the thrombus than alteplase, and it also has a longer half-life, and therefore it's uh, possible to use it with just a single bolus injection. Uh, based on the available evidence, we have decided to provide separate recommendation for patients with and without large vessel occlusion. For patients with large vessel occlusion, we suggest intravenous thrombolysis with tenecteplase, 0.25 milligram per kilogram over IVT with alteplase. And this is indeed a new recommendation. This recommendation is mostly based on the results of the Xten IATNK trial, but 
also on a pooled patient subgroup analysis of the Australian TNK and ATS trials, which were suggesting a superiority of tenecteplase over alteplase regarding recanalization rates and three month fun functional outcome. However, because our recommendation is based on one small RCT with a non clinical primary outcome measure, and a post hoc uh, subgroup analysis of two other smaller, small trials, we judged the quality of evidence uh, to be low. Of note, this recommendation also, apl also applies to patients eligible for thrombectomy. And now for patients without large vessel occlusion, after a careful analysis of the literature, we feel that there is still no compelling evidence that tenecteplase is non-inferior to alteplase. Therefore, we suggest alteplase over tenecteplase in patients without large vessel occlusion. But the quality of evidence for this recommendation is also low and we encourage enrollment of patients into ongoing randomized trials. Thank you. And Guillaume, is there uh, any other point of uh, the new ISO guideline which uh, do you think merit uh, discussion? Well, uh, it, it's uh, quite an extensive guideline uh, which has been uh, prepared uh, for two years and we have uh, more than 40 recommendations. Uh, we will cover uh, such some hot topics such as minor strokes, severe strokes, defined either clinically or radiologically, uh, low dose of alteplase, uh, potential risk factors for bleeding, including use of antiplatelets and uh, anticoagulants, including NOACs, and also adjunctive therapies, uh, patients with previewed ischemic stroke, dissection and uh, seizure at time of stroke onset. So the, the guideline will hopefully be uh, published um, in February uh, in the European Stroke Journal. And we look forward to reviewing it. Thank you, Guillaume. William, uh, some concluding uh, remarks from uh, your side. Well, thanks, Bernard. So, um, well, first of all, to thank the uh, guideline committee for working so hard. Uh, it, also, um, we'd like to remember uh, Ivan Berg, who was the original chairman of the uh, committee, uh, a wonderful colleague, uh, and all of us remember him with fondness after his very untimely death. Um, uh, and this work is a testament to him. Uh, the second thing is um, alteplase is a very important treatment for patients with stroke. We're concentrating on thrombectomy um, at the moment, which is, a, of course, a very important and effective treatment. But alteplase uh, can be given uh, to many patients across the whole of Europe. And we're conscious that there are many areas of Europe where it is not available to patients. Um, and we encourage the ESO uh, really to work with uh, national bodies to uh, make sure this is provided equitably uh, across all the nations of Europe, particularly where the stroke incidence is, is its highest and leads to unnecessary and avoidable disability. Thank you, super. Really thanks uh, to Guillaume uh, Turk and William Whiteley for their incredible work on this uh, guideline. Bye to everyone and uh, stay safe.